Okay, Tom, you got the... Uh... I do, I have the attendance. Pardon? You got the We're attendance? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, my brain's not working. Um, committee report, no, not committee reports. I Public comment. Public, public comment. comment. Anybody for public comment? Louise Washer is here. Okay. Louise? Am I going first? Please do, Louise. Yes. Um, I Steve graciously invited me here to um, just to tell you a little bit about I'm applying for, um, with Sarah's help, um, for a 319 grant from DEEP to try to um, address some uh, pollution in the top of the river in Ridgefield. But we're, the um, Harbor Watch has been um, for phosphorus and E. coli forever, but those two nutrients um, for the last couple years and, and the highest levels of, of nitrogen in our watershed are up there. Um, there's one Harbor Watch testing site, number 21, that if you read the watershed plan, if you go back as far as you can go back, um, it's just been a site with um, high levels of pollutants. So we are applying for funding. Um, uh, Chris Malik has also been helping us um, to do some focused monitoring and track down to figure out the, hopefully some of the sources um, of that pollution and then to hire um, an engineering firm to design some projects that could reduce the amount of stormwater runoff that might be causing this pro these problems and then to do one of those projects. So we would be doing like a bio swale along the great swamp there that is the top of the river. Um, so it's a, a big project and I was hoping to get letters of support from organizations throughout the watershed. Um, since we are gonna be ad hopefully addressing nitrogen as an issue that is something that causes eutrophication in the harbor. And um, I just, I, I always feel like when the state That's hears from you guys, yeah. um, it's, it's powerful. Uh, statement okay, of support. Fine. So uh, I wanted to run it by you. I'm happy to answer questions. And part of the funding goes to Harbor Watch um, to do more testing up there. And part goes to a big construction project to try to fix some of the problems. The other thing that's happening there is that the wastewater treatment plant in Ridgefield is getting upgraded. And that's going to include denitrification. So we could possibly remove the top of the river from the impaired waterways list if we could get the funding to really focus and that could help the river as a whole. How far up are you saying? All the way up to Richfield, through Wilton? Yeah, so the, the top of the Noak River is actually at the Great Swamp, which is um, off of like Cops Hill Road. If you go through Richfield, go through town down to where there's that strip mall, like Cops Hill Plaza, if you know that area. Okay. Yeah. To the right of that is the huge Great Swamp. Ridgefield Brook um, is the beginning of the river, starts in the swamp, and then it actually goes north for about a mile over to Route 7 and then down Route 7, the main stem. So it's that first part that um, has these impairments, but also the time seems right now to, to try to address them. I mean, Chris thinks we could delist that, Chris Malik at Deep thinks we could delist that part of the river, um, that, you know, there's a it's possible we could really clean it up. Um, and we have so many great numbers from Sarah. Sarah, weigh in if you have anything to add to that. Um, so I wanted to let you know and um, asking for letters of support just generally um, to help us try to get the grant. Yeah, we're really excited to be um, partnering with Louise on that. Um, I'm, I, I haven't met everybody. I'm Sarah. I'm dire the director of Harper Watch. Um, and we've been collecting data up there for a long time. Um, but this work with Louise would let us really add a whole bunch of new sites to our monitoring. Um, and I think the project has a ton of potential because it's a combination of monitoring and really, you know, boots on the ground, shovels in the ground, fixing problems kind of work. So we'll be able to not only really hone in on where the problems are uh, through the monitoring data, but also then quantify how much better things get when we when we do this implementation project, hopefully. So I, I'm, I'm just curious, how much are you guys looking for in the grant you're writing? So um, it's about 
uh, 54,000 that would go to monitoring and track down. And it's about 20,000. There's a big education element that we're going to do a, um, a two year uh, try to raise awareness about proper septic maintenance, which I then want to do in Wilton and Norwalk as well. Um, I think we get a good program set up, we can take that through the watershed. And then for the, we, we're working with an engineering firm that just gave us estimates. So to do an assessment of where the problems might be coming from and to come up with 10 or 12 future implementation problem projects, that's about 150,000. And then if we do one of these big projects, it could be, it will, it will probably be around 250,000. So we're looking at about a $500,000 request, which is probably, we're probably not going to get it. <laughs> but even if they gave us part of that, we can look for funding for the rest. Um, to, to, I, I do think that it's worth, um, worth trying to do this because I think we have the potential to really make a huge difference at the top of the river. Sounds good to me. Yeah, I think it's worthwhile for sure. Yes. Um, if you guys could provide us um, a brief outline, and I mean that specifically so that we could add unbiased shellfish related comments to yeah. our letter. That okay, did I send, I think I sent you one. Um, um, well, it, it was kind of an example as okay, I remember. Yeah. Yeah, but I, 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 I really appreciate that. But I'd, I'd like to just have something um, in a more brief uh, form so that I could free form things tailored uh, from us. Okay, I'll send you just like bullet so you that have would, a sentence. Ab ab absolutely great. And, okay, and, thanks. And I'd like to put a motion on the floor such that this letter be drafted in uh, full support of this grant application. Do I hear a second? I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Can, can I ask one question? Yes. Uh, Joe Schnerlein has been around a long, long time. Joe, any comments on this? Yeah, we've already put a letter together and uh, we're going to back this 100%. Okay. All right. Yeah, it's part of our F grade last year is possibly what is coming down the river that we have no control over. And the work that they're doing upriver can help part the waters to find out what's going on upriver and if and how we can possibly go about fixing it. So it's partially our problem in that we have to support things like this, but it's also uh, going to make us look better in the long run, we hope. Okay. And if we can delist the top, if we can do this successfully in the next few years at the top of the river, we will then come down and completely focus on Norwalk. I'm just curious, does the towns contribute anything? Um, Sarah could answer that. They, they will contribute, they work with Harbor Watch to, to deal with when Harbor Watch, you answer that, Sarah. Yeah, so we, we do get some um, municipal support for the monitoring of the Norwalk River that we're doing currently. Um, we are typically able to get like $500 a year from the town of Ridgefield and $3,000 a year from the town of Wilton. Um, the city of Norwalk, um, we talked about this in the last committee, but um, is able to reimburse us for some of our monitoring supplies that are used by the um, like some of our interns who, who we partner with them to work with. Um, so we do have some municipal support um, in place that, um, you know, with, with their blessing, we could, we could apply to, to this monitoring, but that goes towards our, our existing monitoring of the Norwalk River. So it's not, but it, but it really does make a big difference in terms of the monitoring supplies. They, the town of Ridgefield that we met with um, the, the first selectman last week, and they are fully supporting this and they are offering to, um, you know, be partner on some aspects of it as, as it comes up and, and certainly to work with Harbor Watch in terms of tracking down leaking um, sewage lines and things like that, they're on board for. So I'm hoping for municipal. So what's, what's gonna be interesting here is Ridgefield is planning to take down a dam. And when that happens, um, we don't know what that could potentially release. And um, this could mean that 
Sarah and her gang are going to be there, hopefully uh, be able to tell us whether it's going to severely impact Norwalk or Wilton or anybody else along the way. So it's um, the timing is perfect. So, yeah, uh, I asked Chris Malik about that. Oh, sorry. No, what no problem. Go ahead, Liz. Come down, and he said that we might see high le higher levels of phosphorus initially, um, but that the water should, without that impoundment being there in the long term, it should help clean up the upper mm -hmm. watershed. Yeah, but doesn't that all end up in Norwalk Harbor? Would it make it, the route. Would it come down the phosphorus there? I mean, all roads lead to Rome, ultimately, right? right. I think that. <laughs> um, uh, that's a good. I mean, we don't we don't really know. So I think that's that speaks to the need to collect the data and to track what track what's coming right. down because we don't really know exactly what's in that muck that's uh, above the dam. We don't really know how far it'll travel. We don't, you know, at, at the end of the day, some amount of it is going to get used up, you know biologically in the river as it makes its way down, but we don't really know what the net impact, if any, if we'll even be able to get a signal of that in the harbor. We don't, we don't, I, I don't know. Deep may know, but I, I'm not aware of any analysis on that. Louise, in the previous uh, meeting, it was mentioned that uh, one of your grant competitors is the aquarium uh, with respect to some proposed um, remediation on the west side of the river. I mean, I understand if you don't want to talk about a competitor, and uh, I will, but um, if you could just shed some light on that, if you'd like to. Oh, I'm not even sure I sh should have mentioned that. I just happened to be on the phone, because they're actually, I, I just happened to be on the phone with um, with them and was talking about my project. And and they, I, all I know is that they are also applying um, for a project to try to restore that um, riverbank. And I'm not even 100% sure that I'm right about this, but yeah. between the Oyster Shell Park and the aquarium, I don't know any details about it. I, I think lots of people around here are applying for this same grant. So I don't, I'm not surprised to hear that. I mean, it's interesting in that there are a number of sites that have been identified by DOT as part of the remediation for the walk bridge. And I don't see why that couldn't come out of the DOT's budget and not I wondered about that too. See, I guess they're not addressing this one section. Um, yeah, but and, and but but further than that though, Louise, I would say that as far as the Shellfish Commission is concerned, um, if that one was to be left, um, or let's just say we I wouldn't identify that as an area of critical need. I mean, I think the commission agrees and the shellfishing community agrees that the area of critical need is the south end of Veterans Park. Okay, well, I want to talk to you more about that. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> okay, you have to vote. Let's vote. Okay, all in favor of uh, doing a letter for uh, help with this grant, say aye. 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 Okay. You got that, Steve? Got it. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you. You're so welcome. Yeah, bye bye. Very welcome. Bye. Thanks a lot. Okay. Any more public comment? Yeah. Um, I don't know if that. So, um, Joe uh, had, had, I gave a little sort of spiel at the, at the last, um, at the meeting before this meeting. So, I don't know if, if, Joe, if I qualify as public comment or if you wanted me to talk at some other point. You're muted, Jeff. I'm happy with <coughs> what you did for us, but these, this committee, uh, the Shellfish Commission, may have more questions for you. I don't know. Okay. Are, are you guys finished with Sarah? Yeah, I would think so. Is it Steve? Yeah, anything else, Steve? Yeah, I mean, there was just an, a discussion of the interns and the budgeting process. Um, and uh, Chairman Romano also mentioned things in terms of the budget. I'm, I'm just wondering um, if the city might give more to this project. And John mentioned the commission's relatively meager budgets uh, that we get from moorings and from permits supporting what I think is a, a worthwhile endeavor. 
but the city has a lot deeper po uh, pockets and we're funding something that they should be doing anyway. So uh, I don't know, I think that's uh, something to look at going forward. You're right. Okay. We're Thank good, you, Sarah. Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Okay. Thank you. Nice seeing you. Bye bye. Hey, nice to meet you. Thank you. <laughs> bye bye. 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 All right. Um, finances. I'm going to do approval of the minutes. Oh, yeah. approval of the minutes. Sorry. Do you want a motion? Yes. I make a motion to accept the minutes. Second. Second. Nikki seconded. Okay, all in favor? Oh. Aye. 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 Okay, minutes have been approved. Thank you. Okay. All right, now we go with Tom Matera and finance. Tom, Tom. you're muted, Tom. Tom, you're muted. Tom, get unmuted. Or is he just faking us? I just, just pictured it, the name there. Tom. Oh, there he is. Uh, financial. Tom, are you okay? Are you there? Hello? Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. I can hear you now. All invoices. All of our invoices have been paid. We're up to date on those. I sent out a spreadsheet regarding the uh, clamming permits will be made last year and what we made this year. So all of that has been deposited into our account. So at the closing of uh, the end of December, we're up to date. The only thing that's outstanding is uh, the January phone bill, which I'll, which I'll get over to the controller's office next week. That's fine. Are we in good stand? Are we in good condition? Financial wise? With, yes, we're ahead of uh, where we were last year. Well, I did not receive the final uh, accounting from the controller's office. It's a little bit tricky getting in and out of City Hall now without going through all the protocols. Yeah. Tom, I asked for it today. Uh, here's what they sent me. Uh, starting the month was $22,763.11. The expenditures for the month was, was the phone bill for 9104 So coming into January, uh, total balance is $22,672.07. Yeah, we're way ahead of where we were last year at this time. Uh, we didn't have the Christmas party this year. So that uh, offsets some costs that we normally would have. Uh, Mike Silva says uh, had a, a little bit of issue getting the boat started, but once it was running, it was fine. So we don't anticipate any expenditure on the boat like we did last year. So we're going to be healthy this year going to next year. And not having the seed money come in really didn't uh, hurt us at all. I think what we should do in the spring with the boat is have it hauled and Power wash the bottom, maybe, and uh, maybe we can get some volunteers to paint the bottom. Well, the uh, MU will have the uh, interns come in, and when the interns come in for the marine base, they usually paint the bottom of the boats. We can have them paint ours also. That'd be perfect, Tom. <laughs> okay, um, top size still don't look too bad now since we had it compound and wax so um i guess there's the problem is we got to run the boat the harbor master is not using it at all so you know the old saying use it or lose it so i think we got to start one thing i think we should do is go around and start marking docks that haven't been pulled and see if we can get our harbor master to go and give them a fine or something I mean, these things are laying on the bottom. Their their permits tell them that their their docks have to be pulled out of the water, ramps fastened, and everything else. 
And I looked at Marvin Beach area and there's, I saw three ducks that were still there. So. When are we, when should we schedule a meeting with the Harbor master to put a plan in effect to do this and make sure he's on board to hand out those fines or warnings? Yes, I think so. Because supposedly, of course, DEP doesn't is backtracking on it a little bit, but they said no vessel, barge, um, float shall sit on the bottom of the uh, harbor. Or anywhere. Right, but we had we had that issue with the other gentleman and the harbor master uh, vacillated, from what I remember. Yeah, but uh, in the permits now, I know harbor management been putting that their docks shall be pulled in the in the winter. So if there is oysters there, they can go and grab the oysters with the seed boats. What date did they have to be pulled by? November fifteenth. Uh, yeah, November fifteenth till April. Is it April? I think it's April fifteenth, Pete. Yeah. Same time that they pull all the moorings, like um, uh, Sprite Island, uh, Wilson Cove. They all have to pull their moorings by a certain time so they can go in there and oyster and stuff. Yeah, have all the morning? Have all the moorings been pulled that were put out in the spring? For those two outfits, yes, they pull them. Um, because if you go down the beach, you can see that the, all the oyster boats are working. You got Dougie Stabell working. You got uh, Mike Orvaz. You got Norm Bloom's crew working. You got Bobby Bloom's crew working. You got what Leslie. about the what about the private moorings? The private moorings, they well, there's none over in that area. No private moorings. Um, private moorings are only in the harbor, and that's the, I guess they get pulled for inspections, is it every three years? I don't know what it is, but you have to check with the harbor master that the private moorings have to be pulled a certain time and checked and then put back down if they want. Somebody has a talking or a TV show or something going on in the background. That's where they said all the kids like. Yeah, I got. Yeah, Much better. That was that was Peter. He's all set. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, how about Tom? You want to give your uh, sure. report? Sure. Uh, for December rainfall, 4.32 inches of rain. The average over the years for December is 3.92. Total for the year rainfall came to 44.18. Compares to last year, 61.14. Uh, there were three closures in December. First one was December 4th. We had 1.65 inches of rain fell, closed all three areas. Second one was December 16th. We had 0.93, closed both the uh, half and the one inch area. And the last one was on Christmas Eve, 1.12 inches, uh, closed both the half inch and the one inch. And there were no reports of a bypass for December. Okay, how about uh, committee reports? Water quality, Joe. Okay, we we just had Sarah today, and she reviewed her work on um, on the river with us, in conjunction with um, why we got the F grade from Save the Sound last year, and explained her role in doing the sampling, uh, and then also combine that with Louise, and the grant that they're going for, and, and you have a a synopsis of that. Um, we were hoping to have um, Tom actually give you a, give us a, a short intro on 
uh, what he was able to do with the DOT data. Uh, and he was, he's been starting to graph it and he's getting some interesting results, but we have to continue that next week or next month. Uh, and Jeff, are you gonna let this group know about the meeting next week? No, go ahead. You want, want me to, yeah, the, the DOT wants to attend the Harbor Commission meeting next week and uh, wishes to attend the Shellfish Commission meeting next month to report on whatever they're going to report about having to do with the status of their project. Um, and we'll, we'll wait and see. We're, we're, we're preparing letters to, DO, to DOT and DEP now um, expressing the concerns about their, their vessel relocation plan and also discussing the possibility and the desirability of having an independent oversight monitor uh, during the project to be able to <laughs> oversee and, and, and report back to the Harbor Commission as to the status of the work and, and any problems. And that, that's something we had, re we had asked for or requested five years ago that uh, part of the project involve uh, an independent project oversight manager. So we're going to continue to discuss that in light of the, of the uh, issues that, they, that we experienced when they, when they were doing the dredging uh, a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago. And Jeff, the uh, wastewater treatment plant NPDES uh, hearing is also next week, public meeting? Next Thursday at three o'clock is a public informational hearing on the on the uh, renewal of the of the discharge permit to the city. So I think it would be important for both the Harbor Commission and the Shellfish Commission representative to be present at that hearing and express what the interests of the commission are, uh, the interests are, and the authorities of the two commission commissions and what, why this is important. When is it? Next Thursday at three o'clock. It's, it's a virtual thing, uh, Pete. You know, you oh, okay. log in on the computer. All right. Do you have to get invited or you can just log in? No, you got it. You've got to um, gotta sign up. Sign up. Yeah. Okay. So you go through the uh, um, North's website. Yeah, deep. Well, 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 I can send you this stuff. I, I, I was able to do it. There's okay. a link. Where you, there's a link where you register to be to be to participate. Oh, okay. Or to at least listen. Okay, send it to me, and then I'll be able to do it. I hope. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, police. We don't have any police here, do we? How about harbor harbor management? That was, a, that was a report I just gave, Pete. Oh, that's what it was. Okay. Um, Tom, how's uh, sales going? Tom Matera. Regard. Yes, yeah, I sent out the spreadsheets as to what we did this year and what we sent out la what we did compared it to last year. Okay. No, no one's getting permits now, are they? No, we shut them down uh, the uh, third week in December. That's when I went to get the last check, got the numbers, sent everything out to you guys. And now we're waiting for the new permits and the new maps uh, and the new uh, what we're going to do with the weekend permits. All right. We'll do that after new business, new business. OK, um, water temp. Well, Dave Hop isn't here, so anybody know what the water temp is? I know it's cold. <laughs> Wastewater treatment, we don't have anyone from there. I don't think they've ever made a meeting. Okay, want to make an accept. Uh, Going on accepting uh, the committee reports. Make a motion to accept the committee reports. 
Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, New business. Yes. This is I, Steve. No, oh. and, Co and Commissioner Matera. So uh, Commissioner Matera just mentioned the weekend permit or two day permit we've been kicking around. Um, the thought, and please Tom and Pete correct me if I'm wrong, is to have a two day permit uh, that is both resident and non-resident. One could circle either with a fee, one for resident and one for non-resident. So question one is, should we do such a permit? And question two and three, what would the fees be for resident and non-resident? Well, anybody have any comments? I mean, for, for resident, why would they get a two day permit? It's too cheap. I mean, I think you're looking for two-day permits for <laughs> residents that come in on weekends. Am I right? If I'm wrong, tell me. Hello? Uh, un unless someone bought a two-day permit, they liked the clams and went back to buy another one. Uh, right now, non-resident permit is how much? 17. 17. So if you have a two-day permit for resident, what are you going to charge them? No, that's the question. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't, I don't think you should have a two-day per, uh, permit for residents. I think uh, residents should be seventeen dollars. It's the two, it's the permit for two days for non-residents that I think we got to send home. That's something we got to slam. Currently, the annual permit for a non-resident is thirty-nine dollars. Thirty-nine dollars. So why, why don't we make a two-day permit? which might push him into the $39, why don't you make it $20 for two days? And then they'll say, hey, look, 20 bucks for two days or 39 for the whole season. I'm, right. I'm just, I'm thinking out of the box here, guys. So I'm not just <clears throat> anybody, just, just throwing it out there. Well, Tom and Terry brought something up when we were talking earlier about They've been shutting the beach to <laughs> out of towners, non non Norwalkers. So if people want to go to the beach and clam, they can't on the weekend if they're out of towners. It has to be it has to be a combination which they could go on that site and pay for the pass and pay for the, and pay for the claim permit. Yeah, but it has they're to be not a combination. Letting, they're not letting out of towners on a weekend, even with a pass. Yeah, but that, that, that was under the COVID conditions though. We yeah. don't know what it'll be like this summer. Yeah, that's true. And that's correct. We don't know what it's gonna be this summer with the vaccine, uh, you know, what phase the government, we're, we're gonna be in with the governor. Uh, there was a push to keep the out of town residents out of the beach this year also by the residents. Uh, because once we opened up to the beach for the non-residents, the beach overflowed was, and we had to shut down the beach by 10, 11 o'clock on Saturdays and Sundays, which infuriated the residents because by 10, 11 o'clock, the beach was shut down to everybody. Hence, the mayor put the decree in where the weekends would only be for residents. We don't know what's going to happen this, week, uh, this year and this summer. But if conditions are the same, that will probably happen again if the beach continues to close once it's open to out-of-towners. My fear is that will people use the two-day pass thinking, hey, I got a two-day pass to Clam. I'm now allowed to go into Vets Park or Capasta Beach. That will cause confusion. And uh, $150 tickets will start to be issued to cars. Um, there's enough confusion as it is. It was all a uh, summer long. Um, you know, I, I just don't know. I think the two day pass under normal conditions is a great idea for out of towners go in, do what you got to do, collect your, uh, shellfish and you leave, but going into a summer, which is unknown, I, I don't know. And we have to tread uh, carefully. Uh, that uh, there's no uh, confusion at what you can and can't do with these passes. 
A point well taken, Tom. So you feel maybe it's better for us to address this for summer of 2022? Uh, you know, I, I, I would think we table this until we see, uh, and we could also do it later on. I, I mean, the print of two day passes would be uh, simple enough and, and update the website. Uh, the, the issue is in that is, and we can even set the boundaries now. The issue is what are the conditions going to be in Norwalk, the state and the country and even the world with this new uh, strain of COVID coming in? Right. Yeah, we could always do them later. That's a good point. Yeah, I was looking too, though. I mean, you, you ever go to the beach during the week and see how many out of town cars are there during the well, week? Well, during the week, during the week, it's open to out of towners and they right. pay their fee on the app. So that's, you know, during the week's not the issue. We could still sell the two-day pass during the week. But let's face it, most out-of-towners come to Norwalk on the weekends. Yeah, well, because of the COVID, I think we had a lot more last year. Last, uh, I should say, summer because of the COVID Correct. than wanting to get Correct. away from everything and go to the beach where they could be just with their family and no one else. Correct. And, and what started was that New York and New Jersey shut their beaches down, which forced everybody to come up here. And then as soon as Rhode Island shut their beaches off to out of towners, every subsequent city along the seaboard did the same thing in Connecticut. Right. Well, why don't we table it till do some investigating, see if we hear something. We can always do we can always do it in the middle of summer if we want to, you know, if, if the beginning of summer, if they're saying the it's open, then we'll do it. You know what I mean? It, it doesn't even have to be in the middle of summer. As soon as we see what the conditions are like, like I said, right. to print the two-day passes is nothing. Set the fee is, is quick also. We could set the fee tonight, put everything in place, the only thing we have to do is wait to see what the uh, governor and the mayor do as we get closer to the spring. Mm. That's a good point. Well, as Joe said, twenty dollars is a good price for an out of towner for a two day pass. Because for another twenty bucks, they can buy a yearly pass. Yeah, and and I mean, what do you for seventeen dollars for a resident? What are you going to charge them? Are you going to charge them like seven dollars, eight dollars for this two day pass? I, I, I agree with Joe. I wouldn't do a two day pass for the residents, only the out of town. There's, you know, the non residents. And, and you know what? Even for twenty dollars, what a, a bushel of clams go for now? It's certainly more than twenty dollars. So oh, either yeah. way, they're making, they're 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 on the uh, winning side. Right. They can fill that so, five-gallon pail and come the next day and fill the five-gallon pail. And they got over a bushel of clams then. All right. So if we do go through with it, it'll be for non-residents only twenty dollars. Right. All right. Well, so we want to make a motion on something like that. Yeah, yeah, Don't make you... the motion. I'll second it. Okay. Make uh, uh let's I make a motion that uh two-day permits for shellfish would be. Uh, $20 for two consecutive days. Right. Two for non-residents. For non-residents only. I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Tell me, make sure you put two consecutive days. You also have to it. also, you also have to put in the minutes that after we find what the town is going to do about the beaches and everything. Yeah. This I is mean, just... you also got the two day permit. They can, if they got a boat, they can go to the islands too. But, you know. Uh, I mean, from my understanding, Commissioner Matafari wants to do this just in case things open and we're between meetings. Right. Okay. Correct. Great. You know, there's, some, there's something else on that also, too, is, you know, if an out of town, they decide to buy a two day pass for 20 bucks and we close those beds because of rain. We have to be flexible enough to give them another two days. Or no. 
that would be up to the Marine to be uh, Marine police. As long as they're aware of it, I don't see that's a problem. Uh, right. You, you look also look at what's going on now, starting next Wednesday, starting next. And, and this is why I say things are always changing. Starting next Wednesday, every Wednesday for the next two to three months, uh, the state is going to be issuing food doing the food pantries. Now that you, you were doing them at Vets Park, but because Vets Park, NCC, and Brian McMahon are being used for COVID testing, they're not going to do 9 to 12 every Wednesday for the next two to three months down at the beach uh, where you drive in, they fill up your car with food, and you drive out just like they've been doing it, they've been doing it uh, at Vets Park. So we have to be aware that these parks are going to be used for other things going forward. With the COVID going on. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, so we have to, in the minutes, we got to put and, that so we know what's going to be happening. And those food drives are for anybody. And when I've worked them before, you've got people from out of state coming in, out of town coming in, and getting free food. And that's okay. The only reason I bring that up is because you will have out-of-towners driving in and out of our parks as they're doing with COVID testing. So, you know, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, there's a lot of unknowns is what I'm saying. Right. So we got to take it one day at a time. What else can we do? Yeah. You know. Pete, Pete I've, I've got your motion, but what do you, what else do you want the minutes to reflect? Um, how we're going to uh, move forward on, on if we're going to do the two-day two day permits, depending on what the town is is predicting for. Well, summer. depending on what the, 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 the entry regulations are for uh, Calf Pasture and Vets Park. Right, okay. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> you got that, Tom? Yeah. I have one other question. Uh, Aquaculture called me this week regarding the hotline and the phone messaging and wants to know, uh, currently states the Calf and Shady are closed due to COVID. They want to know what messaging you want on that hotline currently. Shady and, and Calf Patch are closed due to COVID? Yeah, and that was mainly from the summer for the restrictions of entering right. the beach. It was, it, I thought it was open now. Well, close. Code. They are open. Yeah. yeah I, don't, I, don't th I don't think they ever changed that message. Yeah, yeah. We, ought to, we ought to get rid of that message. Yeah. What do you want them to say? Nothing. So just Nothing. remove that. Yeah. If it's open or closed, that's all. No, so no restrictions as of now. Right. Okay. Yeah. Hey, did we vote on that? We did. Yes. Okay. Anything else, uh, Steve? Yeah. So uh, many of you may have seen the letter we received from the research attorney up at uh, Roger Williams in Rhode Island. Um, she was uh, doing a survey of shellfish commissions for shellfish management plans and the um, methods by which shellfish commissions dole out um, aquaculture acreage. Um, I think that uh, the answer was okay and uh, that our acreage is pretty well tied up into ancient businesses and we really don't have uh, cage type aquaculture in Norwalk. That's something we'd have to address on a case-by-case -case basis and would probably have to be sublet. Um, but in terms of a shellfish management plan, uh, please look for a draft from me before the next meeting. I think that's something that's worthwhile. Mm -hmm. We have Steve, some. Do you have the current one? I'm sorry, Tom. Do you have the current one? I don't. What I have are the ordinances that are up on the uh, city website. I will scan in and get you a copy of the current shellfish management plan. That'd be great, Tom. Thank you. 
they have uh, some people are, are, are growing a seed and then they're I know Norman tried to put them in cages and they had a problem with um, drill, drill snails with drilling holes in the oysters. Yeah. Wow. Of course, they didn't have the problem when they were grown in the wild. And I, I think she's looking. I, I, she didn't answer why she was doing the project, but I mean, she's an attorney, perhaps looking how new people could break into the business. That's obviously not something we broker. No. All right. So uh, the DOT will be with us next month. So February 4th, DOT is back. If you have any questions, you can ask them then. And uh, Jeff, would you like to say anything about uh, Tom Hart's current work? Um, yeah, just that he's continuing um, to review the, the turbidity data from DOT as he's done. I mean, he, he analyzed the first set of data that was, was given to us, um, not, not just plotting it, but, but also trying to relate it to, to causes, uh, tides, wind, rainfall, um, and, and uh, bridge openings. We didn't have information on the bridge openings until recently. So his, his job is, is to propose to us or, or suggest to us, recommend, I guess is the right word, conditions that would go into the DEEP permit for the purpose of protecting water quality. And right. then, you know, along with that is how do we enforce those conditions? You know, and then, and then that gets into the, the, the need for, a, for an independent oversight or site monitor. Um, so anyway, he, he's working on that. We're hoping to have a, 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 a telephone conference with him this weekend. Um, but you, you've seen the work he's done before and it's, it's, it's very good. Um, so that, that, that's our goal. We recommend conditions to put in the DEE permit to protect water quality and, and, and uh, by extension, shellfish resources. After what they pulled on this little job, we should have someone as an overseer. Yeah, but see, that, that, that's the issue, Pete, right? So the, the condition can be in there as to what the, the way the work is supposed to, done, to be done, but there needs to be some way of enforcing that and overseeing uh, the work or monitoring the work uh, for compliance. Right. And I think that's something we've got to think about how how we perhaps could use the authorities of the Shellfish Commission and the Harbor Commission to 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 assist with the enforcement of those of those conditions in a D, in a DEEP permit. That's something we haven't thought about before. But, but right. So yeah, and, and, and we now, haven't get, we we haven't signed off on on their project yet. The big no, project, yes. No, because it has it hasn't gone out to a public notice yet for right. comments, for for public comments. <clears throat> and we know based on this initial CP two forty three that the yeah. oversight is absolutely critical. There's no, yes. it has to be done. When we saw what was happening, when I saw what was happening, of course they aren't too happy with me anyway, so. Please don't get called into the mayor's office. <laughs> so we have a meeting with them next week, so next month. So if, if there's anything you can think of, or if you if you have time, take a ride over to where they're doing it and see what they're doing. Good opportunity uh, to fire up the boat and go up there. Yeah. You know. So. You can take the, the, the shellfish boat, it says Harbor Master on it, but it's our boat. Take it right up and just check it out, look around. Of course, they may stand at attention when you go by. You know, they're. But I know uh, uh, Silva's been calling me and saying how. Uh, when the tide's coming out and they're working 
and they're not we're not working. So he'll he'll call me and say they're working now, and say and it's on outgoing t uh, income and tide. So I haven't heard anything about an outgoing tide yet. Anything else? Something about anything else? Seaview Avenue, a wall or something? 80 Seaview? Uh, that just came in from uh, Harbor. We, I haven't received anything. Uh, Tom, have you received anything on that paperwork? Those, those two. Okay. Yeah. Let's okay. see. Let's uh, see what we get. Yeah, I just saw it in one of my minutes, and I opened it up, and it wasn't really too much in there. So. Yeah. Yeah, that it went to uh, Harbor only as as of now. All right. How about old business? Anybody here from CLMP? I mean, Eversource. <laughs> Might as well bring it up. I laugh a little bit. Kramer Shellfish. Kramer Shellfish is here. Thanks for coming, Captain Tim. Hey, Tim. My pleasure. Tim, were you notified that we didn't charge for uh, seed oyster permits this year? Yeah, I did see that in the in one of the minutes. I did okay. see that. Okay. Thank That's you guys good. very much. Make you a little happy. It's yeah, it's it's slow out there. Yes, but we figured, due to the way things are, everybody's having a little hard time. I mean, they said the bottom fell out. When it first happened, the bottom fell out of, on oysters and clams and everything else, basically. You know, right now, my, inter my internet is fading in that. I don't understand that. No, but the, the market right now is slow, but this time of the year, it always is slow. Christmas yeah. was good. And New Year's was good. The summer was good. Then they then after the summer when they closed the restaurants got slow. Yeah. Now it's now it's like dead right now after the holiday. Yeah. It's probably worse than it normally is. Oh yeah, it's bad. New York is bad. New York is shut down. It, New York is, you know, we we mostly feed New York, but there's other areas that markets that are doing okay, but we're definitely off, way off. Yeah. Okay. But thank you guys. You're welcome. We may we may even try clam and transplant some clams out of there too. There's yeah, you mean out of? Uh, I'm telling you, there's nothing going on right now. Yeah, well, it's a good time for you guys to be doing that. So, thank you. Um, anything else, Steve? No. Tom, does Tim have any uh, idea about uh, water temp? Thirty-seven degrees. Oh, Thank you. about wow. 37. Wow. Like you, like, like you guys said, very cold. Yeah. yeah. That's cold. All right. How about uh, our next meeting will be? February 4th. Okay. February 4th. Um, meeting adjourned. Want to make a motion? Make a motion that we adjourn the meeting. Second. Second. All right, guys. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Bye, Bye folks. Bye, Timmy. Bye, Joey. Bye. -bye. Be safe, everyone. Bye. Bye. Steve, Take I'll care. give you a call. Okay, thanks, Pete.